Well, here's a question for you. What's keeping you up at night? Well, a recently released study is revealing what Canadians are really concerned about these days. Joining us now to discuss some of the findings from the annual Humankind Study is Tahir Ahmad, the Chief Strategy Officer of Leo Burnett Canada. Thanks for your time today, Tahir. I want to start off with the topic of loneliness. According to the survey, 57% of Canadians report feeling lonely, at least sometimes. That's not an insignificant number number what's leading to people feeling this way yeah no hi and thank you for having me this is really great to be able to have the chance to talk about this study um, and you're right it is a massive number and it is one that we have to take very seriously and we know that loneliness is seen as an epidemic uh, in other parts of the world and, and Canada is no different um, you know that stat when you break that down to even uh, you know, from a, a loneliness perspective of one in four Canadians feel that loneliness frequently or always and that number spikes when you get to younger generations. So for Gen Z, you're looking at 77% of Gen Zs admit to feeling lonely almost all of the time. That is a significant number. And we're seeing that have an impact on their mental uh, wellness as well as their physical health. And you know what's contributing to that uh, in large part is, is what they're often turning to, right? I, if I focus mainly on the younger generations, it's social media, it's digital screens, it's what they've used especially during COVID and coming out, screens that connect with one another. But what we're finding and what we're hearing in those groups when we, when we speak to Canadians is those screens are actually used as a crutch to avoid actual personal interaction. So now that we're actually back together, they're struggling to figure out ways to actually meet and connect on a more human level. And as a result, they're noting that it's, it's even harder to make new friends right now. So their circle is small, and they're finding it difficult to add to it. And so as a result, they're feeling disconnected, they're feeling lonely, um, and they're feeling that division. Uh, in addition to that, they're noting that there's a real intolerance to opposing views now. So we're finding it difficult to come together on any issue, and that divide is, is continuing to compound that feeling of loneliness and isolation. Now, it seems sky-high inflation has seeped into every aspect of life, with, of course, groceries topping the list. How have Canadians changed their grocery buying habits that you found? Well, what we heard is that they're just having to focus so much on the essentials. And so, you know, very much to your point, like, people are in survival mode. Uh, they're anxious, they're stressed about their financial well-being, about economic stability as a whole. Um, you know, when we ask these questions, we word them intentionally to sort of understand the psyche of Canadians. And when 34% of Canadians say that they're hanging on by the skin of their teeth financially, um, again, that is, you know, looking at a broad segment of the population that is barely surviving. Um, and when you look at under 50,000, people earning under 50,000, 51% of them say they will never feel financially secure again. And you think about that, what that means for the long term, to, to say those words that I'll never feel financially secure or confident or stable again. And that what's interesting about that number is over those making over 100,000, almost 40% still feel the same way. And what we're seeing is that uh, having to make those tough decisions on always essentials, which means there's very little left over for any of the things that I enjoy, no matter where you are, whatever income bracket you're in, having to make those sacrifices is having an impact on how people are living and the quality of their lives. You know, it is concerning to hear about some of the results that you've come across here. Why is it important to dig into how people are feeling at this moment? Well, I just think it's, it's very important that there is new leadership that can help people solve their problems and issues. The main reason why we do this at Leo Burnett is because you know, we believe that brands that understand what people are really going through, to your point, what keeps them up at night, their concerns, their issues, their problems, those are the brands that can lean in and be part of the solution. And as a result, create a bond and a connection with consumers that ultimately is more profitable for brands. I think more from a human level, you know, as a Canadian myself, we are yearning for solutions. We're yearning for a higher quality of life, not two, three, four years from now, but right now. And so what we note in the, in the report is the ways that brands can help bring people together, a consistent thread across all of the themes we cover in the Humankind study is this sense of division. And so, you know, we came out of COVID with this hope uh, that we would all come together and sort of dance our way into a healthier, more prosperous future. What we're finding is, is that's uh, the opposite. And so what people are craving is 
be able to come together on issues, come together more from an income equality perspective, come together more from a physical proximity perspective. So that plus the idea of being more transparent, that brands can be in how they do things and why they do things, how they are done in service of people. You know, people understand that brands and companies need to make profit, but help people understand what's in it for them as well. And when brands can do that, demonstrate that empathy, that understanding, we can work for people versus the perception that we're working against them. You know, hearing some of these results, I'm guessing people are watching are probably feeling that it's pretty, unfortunately, relatable. I wonder if there's anything positive or optimistic that you came across. Yeah, no, I appreciate you asking because this is one of those studies that often even as I work through it with the team, you end up going, wow, this really feels heavy and negative. But I'd say the biggest difference this year uh, compared to previous years, this is our third year of the, of the study, is that in the past people felt more that fear, as you can understand with COVID, then there's this feeling of resignation that you know life after COVID was not what they anticipated or expected it to be. Now we're seeing that the psyche of Canadians is that they're ready for change. And they're no longer hands off the wheel, resigned to their fate. They're saying, I want to do something about this. And I, I'm looking for different forms of leadership to help be a part of the change because they're looking to improve the quality of their life now, as I said before, not years from now. And we're seeing that even in the case of the environment. And so that, that is a persistent issue that's been in the, in the study for three years running now. But the difference being we're seeing a drop in people that are giving up on the environment. So in the past, we saw that people felt that the earth was past the point of saving, which is a real stark data point. That point dropped 28 points. Uh, sorry, 23 points from year over year in terms of people saying it's past the point of saving. We're seeing people, all generations, lining up to say, we need to do something, we're prepared to do something, show us how we can be a part of more meaningful change. So those are, that, that is the biggest takeaway from the study this year, that people are ready to bond together and do something about it, and they're just looking for the right leadership. Hmm, interesting. Thanks so much for digging into the findings from the annual Humankind Study. I appreciate that to hear. My pleasure, and for the full study, just go to leoburnett.ca. You can download the whole thing.